Hello everyone, it is the third day of the new year and unfortunately I am still sick so I'm driving instead of walking tonight. And this is just the road I live on, we're gonna drive down to the end real quick and see if there's a wood frog out. If you'll recall, one of my favorite finds of last year was discovering that I actually have wood frogs right here, about a mile from the bottom of my driveway on the road I live on. So we are gonna drive down here and see if there are any out tonight to kick off this episode. I really do not know what has me so under the weather, but it's not COVID. I took a test. I am clear of COVID. Whatever it is, it's definitely no joke because this is day four now of feeling really, really bad. Granted, three of those days I've gone herping, so I haven't really given myself much time to recover, but the frogs wait for no one. Well, this is a mite bit ridiculous, but I just night cruised. That is a little brown snake. Check that out. This little guy is out on the prowl. I've seen a couple peepers and a couple chorus frogs, but this guy has been the only other herp. I have not seen any larger frogs. I was really expecting to see wood frogs tonight, but I mean, I'll take a snake. It is not uncommon for us to see brown snakes on the road during the winter time. It's just never really something that can be predictable. Anytime it's above 50 degrees or so, it's always possible, but I never really expect it. So this was definitely a nice surprise. All right, well, I'm gonna get this little guy out of the road, take a quick photo of him, and let him on his way. But our second snake of the year, a nice little decays brown snake. Not what I was expecting or hoping to see tonight, but I will definitely take it. And then right over here, we have a American toad. That is yet another new species for the year. Look at that guy. They are active a lot earlier in the year than Fowler's toads. It'd be kind of weird to see a Fowler eye out this early, but look at those warts. This guy is warty to the max. Well, here's our conditions for our second snake of the year. It's raining. We just had a huge thunderstorm move through. There's a little peeper. Let's take a look at this guy. That's actually an upland chorus frog. I'm gonna get out and look at that guy, but uh, we actually had a big series of storms move by that produced some tornadoes, and it is 61 degrees. And here, here is our little upland chorus frog. I want to put the macro lens on for this guy, but like I said, I am sick, and I mostly just wanted to see if there were any wood frogs out tonight, so I'm probably going to call it a night here pretty quickly. But yet another new species for the year, an upland chorus frog. I am sure we'll be seeing many, many dozens more of these. This is a little bit weird. We've got one bullfrog, two bullfrogs, and uh, three bullfrogs just sitting in the road right here together. What is this? Oh, very nice. A little southern leopard frog. Almost a wood frog, but not quite. Just like wood frogs, these guys are ranids. And uh, they're pretty attractive looking frogs, very variable. You can see this guy's vocal sacs are a little bit floppy, meaning that he has been calling tonight, which is a good sign. Well, I was definitely happy to see the snake, but it seems like the amphibian activity is actually a little bit lackluster compared to what I was expecting. Normally when we get, you know, a nice warm, uh, rain front coming in this time of year. It triggers the first explosive breeding movements for a lot of our winter breeding amphibians and that just doesn't seem to be happening tonight. There's barely any amphibians on the road so I'm probably going to wrap it up but not bad for a quick little 30 minute drive down the road I live on. So yeah hopefully I'm feeling better tomorrow and if that is the case then I will get out again tomorrow or tomorrow night just depending on what the weather does. Good morning everybody, it has been a few days since I last saw you guys, but I'm finally back to mostly healthy. I feel like I'm probably at like 95% right now. Definitely not the way I wanted to start the new year, but hey, you can't really help it. I'm ready to hit it pretty hard today. I'm gonna eat this sandwich real quick, and then I'm going to kind of walk off the side of this mountain and look for a spring that I think is going to be, you know, down that way somewhere. And hopefully at that spring we'll find some salamanders, so. I'm gonna eat real quick and we'll get to it. Well, our first herps of the day came very quickly under the first rock I flipped when I got out of the car. Here we have two Webster salamanders. Let's see, there's one that was kind of a little more obscured right here. Look at these guys. You might be thinking these guys look a lot like redbacks and they definitely do, but they are in fact their own species. And uh, they have quickly retreated down holes. I'm sure we're going to see more today, though, so I'll just let those guys go. 
So yeah, the big thing I want to do today is go down and try to find the spring that I know is down here somewhere. So we're just going to hoof it down this mountain and hope that we hit the spring or some sort of creek. And that's where we're going to be mostly looking for salamanders today. So here's another green and all. Pretty big one too. Well, here it is. Might not look like much yet, but we're going to follow it downstream a little bit and see if it improves. All right, well, here is our next find of the day, a nice southern two-lined salamander, but there's actually something very special about this guy that I'll show you guys. But I'm going to have to put on my close-up lens to do that, so I'm going to get a quick photo of him, and then I will give you guys a close-up look. So this guy is what is known as a guarding male, Eurycia syrigera. The southern two-lined salamander we are very familiar with, but this is a different morphological version of the same species. And this is a male, but you'll notice he does not have the Siri that we often talk about when we look at male two-line salamanders. And the reason for that is he has a different role to play than the, uh, the males that have the Siri, which are known as searching males. And if I'm not mistaken, we still don't know an awful lot about the purpose of this form yet. But nevertheless, it is very cool that two very distinct versions of Eurycia syrigera exist. The guarding male, the searching male, and then of course we have the females. But very, very cool. I'm just going to let this guy scoot back under his rock, and we're going to keep searching and see what else we can turn up. Here is yet another new species for the year. This is the spotted dusky salamander. Very, very common, but we're learning that there's actually quite a few more dusky salamanders in this part of Georgia than we previously thought. And this is probably the most generalistic of those salamanders, but very, very common. Something I'm sure we're going to see many more of this year, and we'll probably see even more of these guys today. But one thing I would note about this guy is he does have a kind of blunt head, and that's how we're going to differentiate the species from Desmognathus prolapsus, which is probably going to occur in this same habitat. All right, guys, well, this area has been decent, but nothing crazy, just the usual suspects, really. I do have another area close by that I think is a little more salamandery than this, so I think we're going to head over there and see what we can turn up. Well, here's a very familiar face that I'm sure will be very abundant in 2023. The northern slimy salamander. This is just one of the many slimy salamander species we have here in Georgia, but it's probably the one we see the most of, just because they're super common in this general region where we live. But I'm just gonna let him crawl back under his rock. Nice to see him. Well, would you look at that? A new reptile species for the year. This is an eastern fence lizard. Very, very common, as I'm sure regular viewers know by now, but definitely a nice sign. These guys tend to be a little more cautious when it comes to coming out in the winter than green knolls. All right, our next spot of the day is a little swampier, but a lot of the targets still remain the same. The big thing that we're really hoping to see here is a mud salamander, but I've been coming to this spot for years now and it has not happened yet. But I do know this is just a very good place to see good numbers of salamanders and this early in the year, that's perfectly fine with me. So I'm gonna dig around for a little bit, flip logs, and we'll see what we can turn up. We've probably got about two hours of light left before it starts getting dark on us. Well, right on the edge of this pond, this kind of floating log produced that guy. Well, it's not the reddest red salamander, but it's still a very, very good looking animal. Look at that. This is the first time we've gotten to see the species under the super close up lens. And it is pretty stunning. Look at that. You can see this guy has a lot of black coloration on his face, and that is evidence of integration with the southern red salamander subspecies in this area. We are right where the southern and the northern subspecies meet in Georgia, and it produces some pretty cool and interesting looking salamanders. He's very, very slowly starting to escape. That is so cool looking though. What a beautiful animal. These guys are one of the more common salamanders at this spot, so hopefully we'll see some more. But very, very nice. Good start. And here's a look at this guy under the normal lens. Still a good looking salamander, but you definitely can't make out as much detail. Really, really good start at this spot though. All right, so here in this larger pool, we have something really cool. This is actually our first couple of spotted salamander egg masses for the year. I'm gonna switch to the GoPro here so you can see them underwater a little bit better, but very, very cool looking vibrant blue egg masses. These are some of the most alien things in the herp world, in my opinion. They're just so crazy looking.
And here's our next red salamander of the day. This guy is hardly red, actually. He's very, very faded. I'll put the macro lens on real quick and give you guys a better look at him, but a little bit bigger than the first one. Definitely older. This guy actually kind of superficially resembles a mud salamander. Still a really cool looking animal, just not nearly as vibrant as our first one. Here's a look at him under the video light without the macro lens. <laughs> Barely any red tint at all. Which actually makes him pretty unique because this is definitely one of the least colorful red salamanders I have ever seen. Well, our next salamander of the day is another new species for the year. That right there is a four-toed salamander. But yeah, that is Hemidactylium scutatum, the four-toed salamander, and the only member of the genus Hemidactylium. This species is named after its toes, but uh, just a super unique species of salamander all around and not terribly common. I would say these guys are locally abundant, so when you get into an area that has them, they can be quite common. These guys also have a pretty interesting texture. They're very bumpy, and I think you can see that a little bit better with this lens than you could otherwise. You can also see that little pinch at the base of the tail. These guys are super quick to release their tails when they're attacked by a predator. It's a little bit of a look at that square head and those four toes. It's crazy how just ambiguous looking salamander toes are with this lens. One common misconception about four-toed salamanders is that they require sphagnum moss, which is this moss right here. It's pretty distinct. You'll recognize it pretty quickly. And uh, you do tend to see it in a lot of places where you find four-toed salamanders, but it is not necessary. So if you happen to be looking for this species and you're not seeing sphagnum moss, don't be completely discouraged because some of the best populations I know about exist in areas with literally no sphagnum moss whatsoever. Here's another four-toed salamander. Look at that. This one's quite a bit different looking from the last one, largely because it's a female. I'm going to get out the video light real quick because we are losing light. There we go. Check her out. A lot more dorsal patterning on this one. Hello. I'm not sure if she's gravid or not, but it's definitely a female. You can see, I'll flash back to the male real quick so you can see what I mean, but the facial structure is a lot different with the females. I don't know if they would be classified as Siri or not since they're not on Eurycia, but, uh, but they definitely have a similar pheromone recepting structure that dangles off the front of their head and the other guy was pretty prominent with it. Here's another Southern two lion salamander. This one doesn't have pronounced Siri, nor is it a guarding male. It doesn't have that big bulbous head like the one we found earlier today. You can see just how ridiculous looking that last one was when compared to this guy, but this also could be a gravid female or just a female who's not having babies this year. So she's under a rock pretty far from the water. So I'm just gonna put her back. Whoop. All right, everyone. Well, I think that's gonna do it for today. Not the best, but also definitely not the worst. It felt pretty great out here today, despite the fact that it got cold last night and we saw quite a few different herp species, including a few that are new for the year, so. I can never simply drive home. It's always something, a train, traffic, flat tire, you never know. And insult to injury. Apparently my tags expired. <laughs> So this awesome thing happened when I pulled up to that uh, train to stop where the cop got behind me and he sat behind me so long because the train was there for so long that he noticed my plate was expired. I had no idea my plate was expired, but apparently it expired in September. So definitely my bad, but still, you just can't make up the fact that that train caused me to get a ticket. I mean, that is just, that's, that's next level stuff right there. What a way to end the day. All right, guys, so I've been trying to think of a way to kind of display our species list at the end of each video. I know a lot of people wanted to see that. I have a hard enough time fitting all the patrons in at the end of the video, so I decided it's probably not going to be possible to fit our species list in, especially towards the end of the year when it gets into the hundreds, hopefully at least. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to display the total at the end of each episode, including how many species we gained that episode. And then I will put the full species list in the description of the video. For example, in this episode, we are now up to 17 species, and that's up an additional 12 species from last episode, which was episode one. So almost 20 species already, only two episodes in, and I wouldn't say we've really had a cleanup outing yet. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the year has started. I've already got the next episode halfway filmed, and it's going to have 
a decent number of snakes in it, actually. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode.